So how old were you when you realized you wanted to be a model artist? Five. Oh, wow. so where did you get the inspiration? Well, you know, at that point, uh, the original Star Trek TV series was on television. And my next door neighbor, I grew up on an Air Force base, my next door neighbor was a fighter pilot and he used to watch it. And I'd go watch it with him. And somebody gave me a copy of a book called The Making of Star Trek. And it had pictures in it that showed that the Enterprise was a model, that all the weapons and things were props. So I understood right away that it wasn't real. And I thought I was totally fascinating. So from that point on, I knew that was what I wanted to do. So do you like copy a lot of the stuff from Star Trek? Is that where you get a lot of your... No, Star Trek has a different look and feel to it. It's interesting. Star Trek is a very different animal than Star Wars. So Star Wars is kind of fun because Star Wars is a lot more real world in a way. I mean, it's spaceships, but they look like beat up old airplanes or, you know, that they look like real world stuff to me. So I draw inspiration just from the real world. We went on episode one, we went to Davis Mountain Air Force Base in Arizona. And it's where the military store all the aircraft that they aren't using. And we went, there were 8,000 airplanes parked in the desert. Oh, wow. And we spent two days taking pictures of them. And it was all the, the dents and the scratches and all that stuff. So That's that really was cool. great inspiration. Who's your favorite character in Star Wars? Uh, I think Darth Vader, just because he had the coolest ship. He had the coolest costume, I think. So he had the best Star Destroyer. So what other movies have you done, have you worked on? Uh, some of the Transformers movies, some of the Star Trek movies, um, Back to the Future, a bunch of, bunch of films over the years. And which one has been your favorite out of those? Uh, of non-Star Wars films? Yeah, of non-Star Wars. I really enjoyed The Rocketeer, and that was a fun film because it was a film anybody could go see. It had no language issues in it. It was a great story. It had a great look. That was really fun. Galaxy Quest was a lot of fun. Star Wars has been around for a long time, and a lot of people love it. Why do you think that people just continue to love watching it? Because I think it's an enduring story. I mean, it's a somewhat, it, it gets complex at times, but it's sort of a black and white story of good against evil. And I think people can really identify with it. And obviously they do because it's had such longevity. It's gone on and on and on. There are, I don't know, three or four generations now of Star Wars fans. So there's something about that story that really speaks to people. Yeah. So, so this is the original That's the pod they used the first on location episode? from episode one. This is the one that Jake Lloyd sat in. And they had it on location in Tunisia, and then I think they shot cockpit elements of him in there, probably against a blue screen. That's the actual one. So how long would it take to just, in general, make one of those? To build that? That was done overseas in England, so we weren't involved in building it. But I would imagine something like that's probably built in the course of six to eight weeks. But it's probably a team of people doing it. You probably got at least a dozen people involved in that. Because it involves like finding these old aircraft parts and reconfiguring those doing the sculpture for the cockpit and then making a mold of that and then doing a casting. So you get a fiberglass skin. Somebody's probably detailing all the instruments and building the seat and somebody does the painting. So all of these things are usually very collaborative. It's a lot of people with a lot of very specialized skills coming together to build these things. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. Thank okay. you. All right, thank, thank you very you much. So much.